remember last time we explored the fossilised horse droppings of Mesopotamia? <laughs> and we were able to deduce from their shape, frequency and general condition that King Solomon had at least three more concubines that he could handle in a leap year. <laughs> Today we turn to the Orinoco Basin in the pre-Jurassic menopause. A place, a place where until recently the hand of man had never set foot. <laughs> Here's a model in plasticine, naturally because it's a plasticine period, showing, <laughs> showing how America and South Africa and Finland were joined together before they were thrown apart by a giant pre boracic volcanic belch. <laughs> <laughs> to form what we know today as the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean and Staines Reservoir. <laughs> It's my belief that just before the two continents parted, a giraffe was standing on this very crack with one foot on one side and three feet on the other. <laughs> How do we know this? Because we found half a giraffe in South Af Africa, half a giraffe in Finland, and this bicycle wheel in Staines Reservoir. <laughs> now here, here we have a map of the Pernambuco Trench, as it was at the time of King Popocatapetl the 19th. And what does this tell us? It was here that we discovered the most significant find of our dig so far. Lice in the beds. <laughs> Archaeology can be found. Now here... <laughs> here on the map there occurred an event that was to make us all redraw the maps of the region. It was a giant porcupine that ate all the previous maps. <laughs> now here, on this new post-porcupine map, we went up the river Kwa and up the Tuing and around the Kong. <laughs> and here, in this shallow depression, we found this. No, we didn't find that. That's my dressing room key. <laughs> We found this. <laughs> we found this. Now, to Professor Beard of Gidea Park University, it's just a rusty nail. To me, it's an open sesame of the most intimate harems of the court of King Popocatapetl the 12th to the 21st inclusive. <laughs> Except, of course, the 16th, who was a poofter. <laughs> what other evidence have we got? Well, what is this? Quite clearly, it is a ceremonial earring worn by an early pre-prandial virgin of the Machu Picchu. As she went on her way, quite naked, to take part in the ceremony of the consummation of the sun god squib and the opening of the anteater shooting season. <laughs> Why only one earring? Professor Hump of Harlow Newtown University suggests that this is a red herring. Nonsense. I say she wore the red herring in her other ear. <laughs> Here is an artist's reconstruction of a young pre-prandial virgin wearing her ceremonial regalia. There she is. <laughs> What a prickly pear. <laughs> a priceless find, but there was even better to come. Now, what is this? Professor Heap of Basildon University states that this is part of David Bellamy's tent from the 1973 expedition, when he was accompanied by Magnus Pike, Terry Wogan and a gorilla. <laughs> Professor Mound of Clacton University says bucket. Now, it's not part of a tent. It's not part of a canvas bucket. It is no less than King Popocatapetl's jockstrap. <laughs> or as Dr. Spooner would say, King Jockopatapetl's popstrap. Now, the point is, how was it held up? Elastic was unknown, chewing gum was unheard of, indeed, unchewed, except, <laughs> except the inhabitants of a pre-Iron Age tribe of hunters and potters confined to a small area in the southeast, now known as Surbiton. Now, <laughs> this, which Professor Heap thinks is a guy rope, was clearly the world's first and most primitive suspender. Its failure is self-evident. How then did the king hold it up? He held it up with the nail. It all fits in, you see. But the nail fell out, and the naked king cavorted with his naked virgins, clad only in their earrings and their herrings. Now, how can we conjure up this picture of writhing naked bodies glistening with sweat from these few relics? Is it the wondrous science of archaeology, or should I be back on the tablets? <laughs> Perhaps we'll never know. Next week, a moss-covered bulldog clip and initiation orgies among the South Atacaman virgins, live from the car park at the back of Tesco's. Good night. <laughs>